Positron Emission Tomography, Wikipedia Article Audio Positron Emission Tomography is a nuclear medicine functional imaging technique that is used to observe metabolic processes in the body as an aid to the diagnosis of disease. The system detects pairs of gamma rays emitted indirectly by a positron emitting radionuclide which is introduced into the body on a biologically active molecule. Three-dimensional images of tracer concentration within the body are then constructed by computer analysis. In modern PET CT scanners, three-dimensional imaging is often accomplished with the aid of a CT X-ray scan performed on the patient during the same session, in the same machine. Uses if the biologically active molecule chosen for PET is fludeoxyglucose, an analogue of glucose, the concentrations of tracer imaged will indicate tissue metabolic activity as it corresponds to the regional glucose uptake. Use of this tracer to explore the possibility of cancer metastasis is the most common type of PET scan in standard medical care. Less often, other radioactive tracers are used to image the tissue concentration of other types of molecules of interest. One of the disadvantages of PET scanners is their operating cost. PET is both a medical and research tool. It is used heavily in clinical oncology, and for clinical diagnosis of certain diffuse brain diseases such as those causing various types of dementias. PET is also an important research tool to map normal human brain and heart function, and support drug development. Oncology PET is also used in preclinical studies using animals, where it allows repeated investigations into the same subjects. This is particularly valuable in cancer research as it results in an increase in the statistical quality of the data and substantially reduces the numbers of animals required for a given study. Neuroimaging Alternative methods of scanning include X-ray computed tomography, magnetic resonance imaging and functional magnetic resonance imaging, ultrasound and single photon emission computed tomography. Cardiology while some imaging scans such as CT and MRI isolate organic anatomic changes in the body, PET, and SPECT are capable of detecting areas of molecular biology detail. PET scanning does this using radio-labeled molecular probes that have different rates of uptake depending on the type and function of tissue involved. Changing of regional blood flow in various anatomic structures can be visualized and relatively quantified with a PET scan. Infectious diseases PET imaging is best performed using a dedicated PET scanner. It is also possible to acquire PET images using a conventional dual-head gamma camera fitted with a coincidence detector. Although the quality of gamma camera PET is considerably lower and acquisition is slower, this method allows institutions with low demand for PET to provide on-site imaging, instead of referring patients to another center or relying on a visit by a mobile scanner. Pharmacokinetics PET scanning with the tracer fluorine 18 fluorodeoxyglucose, called FDG PET, is widely used in clinical oncology. This tracer is a glucose analog that is taken up by glucose using cells and phosphorylated by hexokinase. A typical dose of FDG used in an oncological skin has an effective radiation dose of 14 MSV. Because the oxygen atom that is replaced by F18 to generate FDG is required for the next step in glucose metabolism in all cells, no further reactions occur in FDG. Furthermore, most tissues cannot remove the phosphate added by hexokinase. This means that FDG is trapped in any cell that takes it up until it decays, since phosphorylated sugars, due to their ionic charge, cannot exit from the cell. 
This results in intense radio labeling of tissues with high glucose uptake, such as the brain, the liver, and most cancers. As a result, FDG PET can be used for diagnosis, staging, and monitoring treatment of cancers, particularly in Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and lung cancer. A few other isotopes and radio tracers are slowly being introduced into oncology for specific purposes. For example, 11C labeled metamidate has been used to detect tumors of adrenocortical origin. Also, FDOPA PET CT, in centers which offer it, has proven to be a more sensitive alternative to finding, and also localizing, pheochromocytoma than the MIBG scan. Small animal imaging Musculoskeletal imaging Safety Operation Cardiology, atherosclerosis, and vascular disease study, in clinical cardiology, FDG PET can identify so-called hibernating myocardium, but its cost-effectiveness in this role versus SPECT is unclear. FDG PET imaging of atherosclerosis to detect patients at risk of stroke is also feasible and can help test the efficacy of novel anti-atherosclerosis therapies. Imaging infections with molecular imaging technologies can improve diagnosis and treatment follow-up. PET has been widely used to image bacterial infections clinically by using fluorodeoxyglucose to identify the infection-associated inflammatory response. Three different PET contrast agents have been developed to image bacterial infections in vivo, maltose, maltohecaos and 2-fluorodeoxysorbitol. FDS has also the added benefit of being able to target only Enterobacteriaceae. Pharmacokinetics, in preclinical trials, it is possible to radiolabel a new drug and inject it into animals. Such scans are referred to as biodistribution studies. The uptake of the drug, the tissues in which it concentrates, and its eventual elimination, can be monitored far more quickly and cost-effectively than the older technique of killing and dissecting the animals to discover the same information. Much more commonly, drug occupancy at a purported site of action can be inferred indirectly by competition studies between unlabeled drug and radiolabeled compounds known a priori to bind with specificity to the site. A single radioligand can be used this way to test many potential drug candidates for the same target. A related technique involves scanning with radioligands that compete with an endogenous substance at a given receptor to demonstrate that a drug causes the release of the natural substance. Pet Technology for Small Animal Imaging a miniature PE tomograph has been constructed that is small enough for a fully conscious and mobile rat to wear on its head while walking around. This rat CAP allows animals to be scanned without the confounding effects of anesthesia. PET scanners designed specifically for imaging rodents, often referred to as MICRO PET, as well as scanners for small primates are marketed for academic and pharmaceutical research. The scanners are apparently based on micro-miniature scintillators and amplified avalanche photodiodes through a new system recently invented uses single-chip silicon photomultipliers. Musculoskeletal imaging, PET has been shown to be a feasible technique for studying skeletal muscles during exercises like walking. One of the main advantages of using PET is that it can also provide muscle activation data about deeper lying muscles such as the vastus intermedialis and the gluteus minimus, as compared to other muscle studying techniques like electromyography, which can be used only on superficial muscles. A clear disadvantage is that PET provides no timing information about muscle activation because it has to be measured after the exercise is completed. 
This is due to the time it takes for FDG to accumulate in the activated muscles. PET scanning is non-invasive, but it does involve exposure to ionizing radiation. 18F FDG, which is now the standard radio tracer used for PET neuroimaging and cancer patient management, has an effective radiation dose of 14 MSV. The amount of radiation in 18F FDG is similar to the effective dose of spending one year in the American city of Denver, Colorado. For comparison, Radiation dosage for other medical procedures range from 0.02 MSV for a chest X-ray and 6.58 MSV for a CT scan of the chest. Average civil air crews are exposed to 3 MSV slash year, and the whole body occupational dose limit for nuclear energy workers in the USA is 50 MSV slash year. For scale, see orders of magnitude. For PET CT scanning, the radiation exposure may be substantial around 2326 MSV. Radionuclides used in PET scanning are typically isotopes with short half lives such as carbon 11, nitrogen 13, oxygen 15, fluorine 18, gallium 68, zirconium 89, or rubidium 82. These radionuclides are incorporated either into compounds normally used by the body such as glucose, water, or ammonia, or into molecules that bind to receptors or other sites of drug action. Such labeled compounds are known as radiotracers. PET technology can be used to trace the biologic pathway of any compound in living humans, provided it can be radiolabeled with a PET isotope. Thus, the specific processes that can be probed with PET are virtually limitless, and radio tracers for new target molecules and processes are continuing to be synthesized, as of this writing there are already dozens in clinical use and hundreds applied in research. At present, by far the most commonly used radio tracer in clinical PET scanning is fluorodeoxyglucose an analogue of glucose that is labelled with fluorine 18. This radio tracer is used in essentially all scans for oncology and most scans in neurology, and thus makes up the large majority of all of the radio tracer used in PET and PET CT scanning. Due to the short half-lives of most positron-emitting radioisotopes, the radio tracers have traditionally been produced using a cyclotron in close proximity to the PET imaging facility. The half-life of fluorine 18 is long enough that radio tracers labeled with fluorine 18 can be manufactured commercially at off-site locations and shipped to imaging centers. Recently rubidium-82 generators have become commercially available. These contain strontium-82 which decays by electron capture to produce positron-emitting rubidium-82. To conduct the scan, a short-lived radioactive tracer isotope is injected into the living subject. Each tracer atom has been chemically incorporated into a biologically active molecule. There is a waiting period while the active molecule becomes concentrated in tissues of interest then the subject is placed in the imaging scanner. The molecule most commonly used for this purpose is F18 labeled fluorodeoxyglucose, a sugar, for which the waiting period is typically an hour. During the scan, a record of tissue concentration is made as the tracer decays. As the radioisotope undergoes positron emission decay, it emits a positron an antiparticle of the electron with opposite charge. The emitted positron travels in tissue for a short distance, during which time it loses kinetic energy, until it decelerates to a point where it can interact with an electron. The encounter annihilates both electron and positron, producing a pair of annihilation photons moving in approximately opposite directions. These are detected when they reach a scintillator in the scanning device, 
creating a burst of light which is detected by photomultiplier tubes or silicon avalanche photodiodes. The technique depends on simultaneous or coincident detection of the pair of photons moving in approximately opposite directions. Photons that do not arrive in temporal pairs are ignored. The most significant fraction of electron-positron annihilations results in two 511 keV gamma photons being emitted at almost 180 degrees to each other, hence, it is possible to localize their source along a straight line of coincidence. In practice, the lore has a non-zero width as the emitted photons are not exactly 180 degrees apart. If the resolving time of the detectors is less than 500 picoseconds rather than about 10 nanoseconds, it is possible to localize the event to a segment of a cord, whose length is determined by the detector timing resolution. As the timing resolution improves, the signal-to-noise ratio of the image will improve, requiring fewer events to achieve the same image quality. This technology is not yet common, but it is available on some new systems. The raw data collected by a PET scanner are a list of coincidence events representing near-simultaneous detection of annihilation photons by a pair of detectors. Each coincidence event represents a line in space connecting the two detectors along which the positron emission occurred. Analytical techniques much like the reconstruction of computed tomography and single photon emission computed tomography data, are commonly used, although the data set collected in PET is much poorer than CT, so reconstruction techniques are more difficult. Coincidence events can be grouped into projection images, called sinograms. The sinograms are sorted by the angle of each view and tilt. The sinogram images are analogous to the projections captured by computed tomography scanners, and can be reconstructed in a similar way. The statistics of data thereby obtained are much worse than those obtained through transmission tomography. A normal PET data set has millions of counts for the whole acquisition, while the CT can reach a few billion counts. This contributes to PET images appearing noisier than CT. Two major sources of noise in PET are scatter and random events. In practice, considerable pre-processing of the data is required correction for random coincidences, estimation and subtraction of scattered photons, detector dead time correction and detector sensitivity correction. Filtered back projection has been frequently used to reconstruct images from the projections. This algorithm has the advantage of being simple while having a low requirement for computing resources. Disadvantages are that shot noise in the raw data is prominent in the reconstructed images, and areas of high tracer uptake tend to form streaks across the image. Also, FBP treats the data deterministically it does not account for the inherent randomness associated with PET data, thus requiring all the pre-reconstruction corrections described above. Statistical, likelihood-based approaches, statistical, likelihood-based iterative expectation maximization algorithms such as the Shep-Vardy algorithm are now the preferred method of reconstruction. These algorithms compute an estimate of the likely distribution of annihilation events that led to the measured data, based on statistical principles. The advantage is a better noise profile and resistance to the streak artifacts common with FBP, but the disadvantage is higher computer resource requirements. A further advantage of statistical image reconstruction techniques is that the physical effects that would need to be pre-corrected for when using an analytical reconstruction algorithm, such as scattered photons, random coincidences, attenuation, and detector dead time, can be incorporated into the likelihood model being used in the reconstruction, allowing for additional noise reduction. 
Iterative reconstruction has also been shown to result in improvements in the resolution of the reconstructed images, since more sophisticated models of the scanner physics can be incorporated into the likelihood model than those used by analytical reconstruction methods, allowing for improved quantification of the radioactivity distribution. Research has shown that Bayesian methods that involve a Poisson likelihood function and an appropriate prior probability, such as via ULF Grenander SCV estimator or via Bayes penalty methods or via IJ. Good S roughness method, may yield superior performance to expectation maximization based methods which involve a Poisson likelihood function but do not involve such a prior. Attenuation correction, quantitative PET imaging requires attenuation correction. In these systems attenuation correction is based on a transmission scan using 68 GE rotating rod source. Transmission scans directly measure attenuation values at 511 keV. Attenuation occurs when photons emitted by the radio tracer inside the body are absorbed by intervening tissue between the detector and the emission of the photon. As different lores must traverse different thicknesses of tissue, the photons are attenuated differentially. The result is that structures deep in the body are reconstructed as having falsely low tracer uptake. Contemporary scanners can estimate attenuation using integrated X-ray CT equipment, in place of earlier equipment that offered a crude form of CT using a gamma-ray source and the PET detectors. Radionuclides and Radio Tracers While attenuation corrected images are generally more faithful representations, the correction process is itself susceptible to significant artifacts. As a result, both corrected and uncorrected images are always reconstructed and read together. 2D slash 3D reconstruction, early PET scanners had only a single ring of detectors, hence the acquisition of data and subsequent reconstruction was restricted to a single transverse plane. More modern scanners now include multiple rings, essentially forming a cylinder of detectors. There are two approaches to reconstructing data from such a scanner, one treat each ring as a separate entity, so that only coincidences within a ring are detected, the image from each ring can then be reconstructed individually, or two allow coincidences to be detected between rings as well as within rings, then reconstruct the entire volume together. 3D techniques have better sensitivity and therefore less noise, but are more sensitive to the effects of scatter and random coincidences, as well as requiring correspondingly greater computer resources. The advent of sub-nanosecond timing resolution detectors affords better random coincidence rejection, thus favoring 3D image reconstruction. Time of Flight PET for modern systems with a higher time resolution a technique called time of flight is used to improve the overall performance. Time of flight PET makes use of very fast gamma ray detectors and data processing system which can more precisely decide the difference in time between the detection of the two photons. Although it is technically impossible to localize the point of origin of the annihilation event exactly thus image reconstruction is still needed, TOF technique gives a remarkable improvement in image quality, especially signal-to-noise ratio. PET scans are increasingly read alongside CT or magnetic resonance imaging scans, with the combination giving both anatomic and metabolic information. Because PET imaging is most useful in combination with anatomical imaging, such as CT, modern PET scanners are now available with integrated high-end multi-detector row CT scanners. Because the two scans can be performed in immediate sequence during the same session, with the patient not changing position between the two types of scans, the two sets of images are more precisely registered 
so that areas of abnormality on the PET imaging can be more perfectly correlated with anatomy on the CT images. This is very useful in showing detailed views of moving organs or structures with higher anatomical variation, which is more common outside the brain. At the Ulich Institute of Neurosciences and Biophysics, the world's largest PET MRI device began operation in April 2009, a 9.4 Tesla magnetic resonance tomograph combined with a positron emission tomograph. Presently, only the head and brain can be imaged at these high magnetic field strengths. Emission For brain imaging, registration of CT, MRI, and PET scans may be accomplished without the need for an integrated PET CT or PET MRI scanner by using a device known as the N-localizer. Localization of the Positron Annihilation Event Image reconstruction Combination of PET with CT or MRI Limitations History The minimization of radiation dose to the subject is an attractive feature of the use of short-lived radionuclides. Besides its established role as a diagnostic technique, PET has an expanding role as a method to assess the response to therapy in particular, cancer therapy, where the risk to the patient from lack of knowledge about disease progress is much greater than the risk from the test radiation. Cost Limitations to the widespread use of PET arise from the high costs of cyclotrons needed to produce the short-lived radionuclides for PET scanning and the need for specially adapted on-site chemical synthesis apparatus to produce the radiopharmaceuticals after radioisotope preparation. Organic radio tracer molecules that will contain a positron-emitting radioisotope cannot be synthesized first and then the radioisotope prepared within them, because bombardment with a cyclotron to prepare the radioisotope destroys any organic carrier for it. Instead, the isotope must be prepared first, then afterward. The chemistry to prepare any organic radio tracer accomplished very quickly in the short time before the isotope decays. Few hospitals and universities are capable of maintaining such systems, and most clinical PET is supported by third-party suppliers of radio tracers that can supply many sites simultaneously. This limitation restricts clinical PET primarily to the use of tracers labeled with fluorine 18, which has a half-life of 110 minutes and can be transported a reasonable distance before use, or to rubidium-82 with a half-life of 1.27 minutes, which is created in a portable generator and is used for myocardial perfusion studies. Nevertheless, in recent years a few on-site cyclotrons with integrated shielding and hot labs have begun to accompany PET units to remote hospitals. The presence of the small on-site cyclotron promises to expand in the future as the cyclotrons shrink in response to the high cost of isotope transportation to remote PET machines. In recent years the shortage of PET scans has been alleviated in the U.S., as rollout of radio pharmacies to supply radioisotopes has grown 30% slash year. Because the half-life of fluorine 18 is about 2 hours, the prepared dose of a radiopharmaceutical bearing this radionuclide will undergo multiple half-lives of decay during the working day. This necessitates frequent recalibration of the remaining dose and careful planning with respect to patient scheduling. Quality Control the concept of emission and transmission tomography was introduced by David E. Cole, Luke Chapman, and Roy Edwards in the late 1950s. Their work later led to the design and construction of several tomographic instruments at the University of Pennsylvania. In 1975 tomographic imaging techniques were further developed by Michel Turpogoshin, Michael E. Phelps, 
Edward J. Hoffman and others at Washington University School of Medicine. Work by Gordon Brownell, Charles Burnham, and their associates at the Massachusetts General Hospital beginning in the 1950s contributed significantly to the development of PET technology and included the first demonstration of annihilation radiation for medical imaging. Their innovations, including the use of light pipes and volumetric analysis, have been important in the deployment of PET imaging. In 1961, James Robertson and his associates at Brookhaven National Laboratory built the first single-plane PET scan, nicknamed the Head Shrinker. One of the factors most responsible for the acceptance of positron imaging was the development of radiopharmaceuticals. In particular, the development of labeled 2-fluorodeoxy-D-glucose by the Brookhaven Group under the direction of Al Wolf and Joanna Fowler was a major factor in expanding the scope of PET imaging. The compound was first administered to two normal human volunteers by a base lobby in August 1976 at the University of Pennsylvania. Brain images obtained with an ordinary nuclear scanner demonstrated the concentration of FDG in that organ. Later, the substance was used in dedicated positron tomographic scanners, to yield the modern procedure. The logical extension of positron instrumentation was a design using two two-dimensional arrays. PCI was the first instrument using this concept and was designed in 1968, completed in 1969 and reported in 1972. The first applications of PCI in tomographic mode as distinguished from the computed tomographic mode were reported in 1970. It soon became clear to many of those involved in PET development that a circular or cylindrical array of detectors was the logical next step in PET instrumentation. Although many investigators took this approach, James Robertson and Zhang He Cho were the first to propose a ring system that has become the prototype of the current shape of PET. The PET CT scanner attributed to Dr. David Townsend and Dr. Ronald Nutt, was named by Time magazine as the medical invention of the year in 2000. As of August 2008, Cancer Care Ontario reports that the current average incremental cost to perform a PET scan in the province is $1,000 per scan. This includes the cost of the radio pharmaceutical and a stipend for the physician reading the scan. In England, the NHS reference cost for an adult outpatient PET scan is £798, and £242 for direct access services. The overall performance of PET systems can be evaluated by quality control tools such as the JASZAC Phantom.